playing all along. So happy Tuesday. Welcome in. Um, today we are talking about a hot topic, but it's been more about with cardiovascular issues and not with obesity. And it is whether or not plastics affect our ability to not gain weight. So giving you a little bit of backup here. So obesity, we generally think of it as genetics plus lifestyle, and that lifestyle can be diet, exercise, things of that nature. But just those two components don't necessarily add up to the amount of the epidemic of obesity that we have going on right now. So there has to be something else. Now, obesity and whether or not we gain or lose weight is controlled by our endocrine system. And our endocrine system, it affects our appetite, our satiety, our metabolism, and whether or not we're gaining or storing body fat. Some of the organs that belong in the endocrine system are like the pancreas and also the thyroid. Those are all endocrine hormones. But other things affect whether or not that endocrine system is operating like it's supposed to. And some of those things are endocrine disrupting chemicals. So chemicals that act on these organs to not operate effectively. Out of that idea came the obesogen hypothesis. So hypothesis meaning it is a scientific theory. Obesogen, it is a scientific theory on obesity and weight gain. So this Hypothesis is that environmental and chemicals, obesogens, contribute to the obesity epidemic, either directly or indirectly. So directly might mean that those chemicals are going in and physically changing the adipocyte or the fat cell. Indirectly, meaning the chemicals are changing some other pathway within the metabolism that is then affecting the adipocyte or the fat cell. From that idea came this term called metabolism disrupting chemicals. So there's the endocrine disrupting chemicals and the metabolism disrupt disrupting chemicals called MDC is how it's abbreviated. And you've probably heard of some of these like the pesticide DDT is one of those. And that's been pulled from a lot of markets and the plastic BPA. So you see a lot of cups and things that say BPA free. And that's because that is that chemical has been removed from those plastics. So this study, I found out about it first from Dr. Ben Bickman's uh, podcast series that he does or his YouTube channel. If you have not followed him, I highly recommend following Dr. Ben Bickman. He gets a lot of good information that the article is called adaptogenic activity of chemicals used in plastic consumer products. And this was put out in the Environmental Science and Technology magazine in the year 2022. So it's a fairly recent study that was done, but throughout it, it linked a lot of other studies that I think I'm probably going to follow up on later that's specifically talking about the effects of plastics in early childhood development and how that relates to obesity. So maybe we might make a series out of this. So once again, the article is Environmental Science and Technology, Adaptogenic Activity of Chemicals Used in Plastic Consumer Products, and that is put out in January of 2022. So what this does is it's trying to draw attention to the fact that there are thousands of plastics out there and are frequently been used or been used more in the last several hundred years, and how does that correlate to obesity? The hypothesis that they have is these MDCs, the metabolism disrupting chemicals, are present in plastics, specifically the consumer products of plastic, and they disrupt the metabolism. And it could be part of the link as to why we're seeing their rates of obesity go up. They looked at 34 common consumer products. And some of these are foods, some of these are care products like shampoos and lotions, and others is products that we just come into physical contact with like flooring and uh, other things that we may touch. And what they did is they did a comparison to a drug called rosiglitazone. So rosiglitazone is a type of diabetes medicine. It's not very commonly used anymore. In fact, this particular one may have been called pulled from the market. But rosiglitazone has been shown to increase fat gaining or increase adiposity. Now, it's thought that it increases it in a healthy way by taking sugar and shoving it into the cells and the cells grow, but they're still metabolic metabolically healthy cells. But we know that this is a common trend with this drug and we've been able to track it and see the exact curve. We know since it's increasing adiposity, we're comparing how these chemicals do 
compared to it to tell if they really do increase fat gaining or not. So I'm going to share with you on my screen if I can figure out how to do it. Uh, we're going to do a share screen and a window and this one. So this one, this diagram shows you um, the things that they tested and it's comparing it. That is not the one that I want. Let's stop sharing that and get the one that I want to share. It's a different one. I'm trying this new technology stuff, guys. I'm not very good at it, but I'm getting there. Oh, share screen window. This is the one I want. All right. So if you can look right here, these are all 34 that they tried. And this line here, the LOD is kind of where we know that rosy glitazone kicks in and starts to make you gain weight when you're taking it. And this rosy max is kind of where it taps out. And so they looked at all of these 34 different chemical compounds and from plastics, directly from plastics. And anything that goes above this LODT is making you gain weight or has these chemicals in it that we know increase adiposity above this medicine. And if it goes over the max, that's where Rosie tops out at. So these cr products actually make more fat gain than the medication itself. So that was saying, all right, plastics definitely have things in them that induce the growth of new fat cells. So they compared each of these to this rosy glitazone. And what they found is 11 of them increase adipogenesis or increase the growth of new fat cells. Four of them did that greater than rosy glitazone. And you can see those kind of here that on this under PP and the two under PVC, and then this one right here, right at PUR. So what these shows is they have a proliferative effect and a proliferative effect means it increases the number of cells and it increases the rate at which the cells mature. And it also had showed a stabilization of the pre-adipocytes. So adipocytes, the fat cells, you have the ones that are not fully mature, the ones that are mature, and then the ones that are supposed to be dying off. So what rosiglitazone does is the ones that are supposed to be dying off are not dying off fast enough. The other ones that are supposed to turn into mature fat cells are doing it at a faster rate. And the number of new ones that are waiting to be turned into mature fat cells, they stayed the same. So what they found is these 11 drugs or these 11 chemicals, I keep calling them drugs, they're not, they're chemicals. These 11 chemicals from plastics increase this proliferation of fat cells or increase the growth of fat cells and new fat cells were not dying off. So when they found out that there were these four, 11 ones that actually did increase fat growth and the four that did it just as equal to the drugs, they went back to see if when you exposed the individual fat cells, did they not just grow in number, but did they also grow in size? And so they do this by looking at the number of lipid droplets or triglyceride droplets within the cells. So basically, do the fats get fatter? And when they compared these to the rosiglitazone, the cells exposed to plastic were larger and had a higher triglyceride content. So these were sick fat cells. They didn't stay nice and fluffy. These were fat cells that were getting overstuffed, basically, just by doing this. And I think that is the other slide that I wanted to show you, which is this one. Yeah, the one that I showed at first. So this is rosy glitazone in the black and white. And then the colorful ones are the ones that showed increased growth, the 11 that increased growth. And you can see if we're looking at this middle line here, multiple of them had higher growth than the rosy glitazone itself. They were stuffing themselves and becoming very, very sick. So yes, this study is very scary. And to me, it's like, the things that we're putting in our body, the things we're putting on our body, they're making us sicker and they're making us fatter. So it's not just about the protein, the fat and the carbohydrate and the calories. It's actually what are we putting these things in and then what are we treating our body with? And the ways that we can get exposed to these plastics, obviously from the food. So the plastics are touching the food and then the plastics are getting in us. 
but it's also compounds that go through skin. So one of the things they tested were shower slippers and these were plastic shower slippers and seeing that the plastics, some of the byproducts from it were absorbing through the dermis or the skin. And then also these products can be released in the air and then inhaled and put into our body. And the example they use was plastic flooring. And as the dust was created from that, we inhaled that and the plastics got in our body and then had a downstream effect on our fat cells. Their results support the idea that plastic chemicals definitely contribute to obesity and change the rate in which we grow fat, the rate in which we store fat, and how fat the fat cells get. So like I said, this can't sounds kind of scary because plastics are everywhere. I tried this morning to just count how many times I touched a plastic before I left for work, and the number was astronomical. It's like, okay, my toothbrush has plastic on it. My tooth brush, my toothpaste has plastic on it. Some of my makeup has plastic on it. My K-cup that I'm putting in my coffee has plastic on it. I was just losing, losing count quite rapidly. And I was like, okay, I can't change everything overnight. I know that I want to minimize the effects of plastic on my body because I want to do everything I can to make sure that I am in as healthy condition as I can be. What are some things that, some practical things that we can do right off the bat? The number one thing we can do is don't heat food in plastic containers. So go back to the idea that Tupperware is kind of killing us or Tupperware is making us obese. Maybe it is a little bit. If you store food in plastic, remove it from the plastic container and put it on a glass dish before you microwave it or before you heat it up on the oven. You know, hopefully you're not heating things on the oven in plastic, but you know, heat it on the oven, heat it in the microwave, something that's not inside of plastic. If food is hot, don't put it into the plastic container until it is cooled down or change to something like a metal or a glass container to store your food in. This is something we did at my house a couple of years ago as we went and got glass container storages. They do have a plastic lid. We don't put the plastic lid on until the food is cooled down and we're ready to put it into the refrigerator. Uh, but, and that plastic lid never goes in the dishwasher. It never goes in the microwave. It comes off and we, we wash those by hand. So storing food in non-plastic containers, don't heat food in plastic containers. Consider going to products that don't have plastic in them that you're going to be touching repetitively, like bed sheets would be a big one. Some of your clothing, believe it or not, may have some plastics in it. Flooring, you know, if you can do more of carpeting that does not have plastic in it or hardwood, which you know that does not have plastic in it instead of the alternative products out there that have more plastics, that would be a great way to go there. The next thing would be, what are you drinking out of? If you can use a reusable metal bottle that doesn't have plastic on it, that is gonna be your best option for drinking out of it, especially if you're going to be drinking things like coffee. Two of the things studied in this study were coffee lids and they did have chemicals in them that were obesogenic or meaning to increase adiposity and fatness about people. So if you're drinking a hot liquid, needs to be out of glass, metal, or something that is not plastic, which I don't know anything you would drink out of other than glass or metal options that are there, but even pay attention to the lid. The plastic lid can make a big difference there. Now, like I said, I think before when you couldn't hear me, sorry about that, guys. I'll try to get it, make sure I get it right next time before I log on. Don't panic. We're going to keep looking into this and make some changes that are doable for you. If you can make changes and remove some plastics for your life, great. You can't change it every night. You can't remove everything. Even the meats that we buy in the grocery store have plastics in them or they're wrapped in plastic. So the more whole foods you can get, the more you can avoid processed foods because they have a lot of plastics on them. If you can change to a glass container, if you can drink out of glass cups, those things are gonna to start to reduce the impact of plastics on your body. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for bearing with me through my audio difficulties. I promise to get better. And thank you for bearing with me while I'm trying out this slideshow thing. I'll get more same line at that too. Have a great week, stay healthy and see you next time.